Thank you for coming, everyone. Super excited to have you all here with us today. Uh, my name is Karen Ko. I'm the Managing Director of WEST, which stands for Women Entering and Staying in Tech. The WEST Mentorship Program is a six-month, one-to-one cross-company mentorship that matches early to mid-career women in technical roles with industry leaders based on their goals and their areas of expertise. Since our program's inception, we've empowered over 340 women through successful mentorship partnerships as they've grown from IC to first-time managers, navigated workplaces as the only, worked through career roadblocks, and more. If you're looking for support in accelerating in your career, we'd love to have you join us in our upcoming September cohort. More details can be found at joinwest.org. So if you're just joining us, um, we'd love for it, love it if you can please introduce yourself in the chat and share what you're most excited about learning for today. So I'm pleased to welcome our guest speaker for today, Moira Chu, who is a senior software engineer at Flat Flat. Moira is inspired by exceptionally well-designed products and spends her days making the process of interacting with data more human. When she's not coding, she enjoys interior home demolition and renovation, all while hanging out with our two fur dog children. Welcome, Moira. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see, let's get some screen. Okay, awesome. Uh, hi, and welcome to my talk, Junior No More. My Shark Tank slogan is your leveling up toolbox. So let me know if that's witty enough to get investors. Uh, let's see. Uh, who am I? Like uh, Karen said, my name is Moira Chu, and unfortunately, I'm not Moira Rose. Um, my engineering career has kind of looked like this. I was an IC, then I became a manager, then I was an IC, which is where my profile was coming from, but now I'm currently a manager at Flatfile. Um, we're remote, but I'm based out of Denver, Colorado. And yes, I love home remodeling, real estate, hanging out with my fiance and my two pups, Nike and Bailey, which you can see in the photo on the slide. And although I'm an engineer, I love humans, so please reach out. And that's my Twitter handle. And um, full disclosure, I'm not very entertaining on Twitter, so don't follow me for entertainment. <laughs> um, cool. So um, this talk is a conversation. We're just going to kind of practice. Um, I don't think I think it's kind of hard to digest like a lot of talking at someone. So we're going to make this um, very conversational. So anytime you see this icon, I want to hear from you in the chat. Um, so we're going to give it a try. First question is broccoli or green beans? I've got to guess on where this is going to land. Mmm, steak, nice. <laughs> green beans, ooh, steak is strong. <laughs> uh, awesome. The second question is uh, Brittany or Christina? Yes, Brittany. Ooh, we've got some anomalies, Christina. Steak, <laughs> yes, steak is the third option for all ages. Uh, and the last one is toilet paper under or over? Over, ooh, over, over forever. <laughs> nice, wow, there are no unders here. Interesting. <laughs> unders for psychopaths, yes. Okay, awesome. And um, I kind of already got this, but where are you dialing in from? We have a lot of Denver. We have um, Oklahoma City, New York. Awesome, San Diego. Awesome. What a great benefit of having Zoom, right? We can all be together. Cool, all right, let's do this. Uh, kind of where we're headed here in the next 30-ish minutes is, um, we're gonna go through past, present, and dream you. And I'm calling this like the toolbox, maybe because we like working on home uh, demolition, but um, this is really the table, content, table of contents of you. Um, so after this talk, you should be able to walk away with resume refactors, professional journals, networking trackers, um, a good idea of how to get and give feedback, mentorship, and um, do's and don'ts of portfolios. And the dream you, which is my personal favorite, which is um, internal opportunities, applying externally and pep talks. Okay, so what does leveling up mean to you?
Oh, this is a chat question. Mm, yes, entering new domains of responsibility. Mm -hmm. New challenges. Learning and preparing. Yep. Awesome. Being trusted to lead teams and strategy. Totally. Um, for the context of this talk, we're going to categorize leveling up as um, not just about learning more, it's about understanding your skill sets, how to show them off, and how to ask for your worth. Cool. So where we're going to start is the past you. And this is heavily focused on reflection, right? And like someone somewhere on the internet said, uh, looking back, so the view looking forward is even clearer. And so this is going to be us after this section, every time we pass a mirror, right? Just like really content on um, understanding where we are and understanding where we want to go. All right. So this is baby Chuck. Baby Chuck is a genius developer, right? He's like old enough to have a resume, um, but baby Chuck has um, struggles, right? Getting a job that is truly fulfilling to him because he can't really um, communicate things that he's done well, things that um, he's looking forward to. And so we need to help baby Chuck. So the first tool is uh, the resume refactor. I think there's um, mixed feelings around the word refactor, right? It's like some people are like, I don't want to rewrite it again. I don't want to update it. Um, but for the context of this, we're going to go with it being a positive thing. Um, and my experience with resumes is like the thing you're required to have, but you hate updating. So you just resort to like stress-filled conglomeration of accomplishments and like listing in that format. So what we're uh, aiming for with this exercise is um, MVP with a different definition, which is minimum verbs on paper paired with narratives. All right, so this is Chuck's resume. It's actually my resume, <laughs> my first one. And um, where we're gonna look at here is just the verbs around my experience. So if you go to that um, section on the resume, there's like implemented, maintained, and represented. And we really just wanna focus on like what a hiring manager would take away from seeing those verbs, right? So like for this first two, it's like around ownership. And for um, represented, it's around like affiliation, but not complete ownership. And I think like understanding these will kind of um, help a hiring manager um, like get you the right job, right? If you're ready for full ownership, they'll lead you that way. And if not, um, the other way. Another one of Baby Chuck's resumes uh, is this one. And the verbs here are lead, maintained, um, evaluate, and convert. So those are just um, other things to just call out around like the verbs and how they're important and how we um, understand them whenever we're explaining it. And it's also really important on your resume to use all the same tense that can get kind of hairy. Um, cool. So the task here is to go through your current resume and circle all the verbs. Um, as I continue this talk, you'll see that icon, the exercise icon. Um, and then at the end, we'll send you a document around those to do's. The second part of the resume refactor is uh, crafting your narratives around your accomplishments. Um, so the narratives are, are important because it helps with like situational questions and being able to um, really speak to your entire resume, right? So like every bullet point on your resume should be able to uh, either show how this was successful or you should have a story around it, right? Like how this is this was successful, how it wasn't, the impact of the company and the impact of this to your career. Um, so we'll hang out on this slide for a second because there's a lot of um, supporting text underneath there. Okay, the next to do is writing a narrative for each bullet point that had a verb. And um, what this kind of looks like if we were going off the last resume, right, is like the verbs on there were responsible, maintain, um, lead, all these listed. Um, but how you would write these narratives is like, I was responsible for team adoption of engineering standards. I struggled initially getting buy-in, but after listening and understanding where the issues were, this is how I got to win. Like you would do that with like every verb on your resume. And the finish line of this tool is um, refactoring it in a way that emphasizes the priority of your narratives. So that you can like, hopefully, right, you can speak to um, the impact from the top down whenever you're asked about your experience. 
cool. Um, number two, which is my personal favorite, um, professional journals. Uh, this is simply just a document, right? Like a spreadsheet. Um, and I'm also going to share out this at the end. Um, but the benefit of professional journals is it's a great way to build habits around tracking your progress. Um, it's a great reference for imposter syndrome when you feel like you're like getting stuck, right? It's like a great thing to look back and be like, no, I'm not stuck. I got all these things accomplished um, in the past month or so. And this is also helpful for your resume refactor because it has, it includes like stories around your past work. Um, also, when I share this out, you'll see that there's like comments on each of these columns around um, what the column header means. So it's a little bit more direct. Uh, the last tool for the past few is network trackers. And um, networking is weird, right? It's like totally a necessity. Um, and I think some people, when they try to access their network, they're like, my network is so small. Um, but keeping a network tracker from like any, even if you're switching careers or industries, right? Like keeping that um, network tracker is just like really helpful around understanding where they are and like where they were, right? And like the thing that I wanna call out here is talking points. Um, I think it's really hard to like rekindle a relationship when you like kind of forget like what was the thing that we would talk about when we worked together, right? Like, so having that as a column there is really helpful to just remind yourself like, oh, maybe we both enjoyed like this hobby or something like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now we're going on to the second section, which is the present you. And there is a present there because you are a gift. Um, this is mainly around your current initiatives you're leading, things you want to learn, uh, cool things you're building, and who you're working with to make all this, all these things happen and how you're showcasing all of it. All right, so imagine we've put a uh, push your life freeze button, right? And now you're in Frozen. This is where we're headed. And if you feel like this GIF, that is okay too. We're like, we've been going through craziness for the last 18 months, um, but we're gonna work together through it. Um, oh, and I also wanted to thank um, West for putting this on because it's made me like really get dressed today. So thank you, thank you. Cool. So the first tool of this section is around feedback. Um, feedback is like that thing that you should ask for, but you don't. And it's also that thing that you should give, but maybe you don't. Um, so how do we get and give feedback? And not just feedback, critical feedback. Um, we're going to distinguish this in the next slide. Um, so critical feedback, what it isn't and what it is. Um, what it isn't is like using words like should. You should work on your tone when you give presentations, right? That's like, I feel like that's kind of attacking the person versus the context. Um, so using should is like very uh, not good. And then what it is, is um, information that is clearly understandable to the receiver about how they can continue or change their behavior, right? So it's like um, clear and it's like actionable. Um, and the other thing about feedback is that um, you wanna be sure that people are in the space to receive it, or like you don't want someone to go through something horrific and then be like, oh, I also think you should do this or like this would be better if you did this, right? Like make sure people are in the space to um, actually digest it. Um, the task here is find your loving critics that will give you that critical feedback. Mentorship. So this is another tool. Uh, and everyone loves Oprah, right? And Oprah says, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. So you get a car, you get a car, everyone gets a car. Um, why and how to be a mentor. Why you should be a mentor is, um, I guess I'll, I'll back up for a second. Like some people think you have to have some like 10 years or something of experience to be a mentor. And really, I think if you have even like one year of experience, you could totally be a mentor. Um, even if it's around like guiding conversations around people making the career transitions or um, maybe switching departments, like anyone can really be a mentor. Um, but why you should be a mentor is to teach what you've learned, um, give back to the community and level someone else up. And how to be a mentor is um, you can do it through public Slack channels. It doesn't have to be formal. Um, you can just do it simply by asking questions. Like that is like a very short lived men mentorship. And um, just tell your network you're interested in getting one or being one. 
to do, find and, and or be a mentor. Okay, and my personal dread is a portfolio. I'm not sure what she's doing here, but that's kind of how I feel when I think about the portfolio. So everyone in uh, that actually like has a portfolio, like if you've got a portfolio, when is the last time that you updated it? When I presented this to my company um, yesterday, I one of the devs said five years. So this is a very sticky topic. Oh, last week, you guys are way more proactive than I am. So I think my answer to this question is, um, I think it's been like three years. So that's a long time. Okay, when to update your portfolio. Um, it's kind of like a debate if it's worth it or not. So we're gonna go through when to and when to not. Like this is pretty much your portfolio, right? Just like an online showcase. This is what I feel like is happening in this gift. She's showcasing herself. <laughs> Um, reasons to update or not. Um, we'll start with not because I feel like um, you can convince yourself very quickly that you should, right? Um, so the reason that you should not do it is just for the sake of having one. You forked some code somewhere and like you want to publish it, like that is plagiarism in the world of tech. Um, you've got some unfinished projects, um, not really the greatest thing to share unfinished projects. And if you don't want to spend the time, just like don't, don't do it. Um, reasons to update your resume or sorry, your um, portfolio are you haven't had an engineering position before. Like this is definitely important because um, you need to showcase your skills that you have built something, right? Um, your current work responsibilities don't include the skill set that you're at. Um, you're applying for your dream job. Maybe you have like a feature idea for um, your dream job company. So you just build it out and you add it to your portfolio. Then you're kind of like a shoe in um at least to get into the pipeline and then also if you're a freelancer i think um the the like project diversity when you're a free freelancer is like really good to showcase so that you can keep getting work okay in my favorite section of the stock is the dream you so imagine i handed you a magic wand you have zero worries about your qualifications your salary request um, there's zero, zero fear here. So where are you and what are you doing? And this doesn't have to be a C-suite role or a leader of really anything, like a formal leader. Um, this can include ideas like, I want to be, I want to work blank amount of hours so that I can do blank with the rest of my time. Um, some examples of these statements. Um, I want to work remotely indefinitely. I want to become a conference speaker. I want to learn how to lead um, paired with so that I can, right? So if, if we flip flop between these two slides, it's like, I want to work remotely indefinitely so that I can do more yoga because my remote work life lets me do more yoga. Um, I want to become a conference speaker so that I can um, travel for work. These are um, very, very powerful statements. So the task here is to write your dream statement. And then the follow-up task is to use it Really, this can be used in several different ways. You can use it um, on your LinkedIn objective. You could use it on cover letters. You can do it on your resume. Um, but I think it's very important, even if you just like write it on your wall to look at it, it's very helpful to have this in your face often. Awesome. So when we're crafting this dream world, um, dreams really come down to this. Like what drains you? What gives you energy? And what does your ideal world include daily? Um, and I think like the, the world of roles is like getting very, um, I would call it gray, right? So like you can identify like what drains you, what gives you energy and like you can specifically ask interview questions around this. Okay, so starting a new job is um, very tough. So we're gonna start with solutioning inside our company. And before we can solution inside our company, we need to understand like other areas of the business um, so that we can craft or like pivot our role to have a role that is um, has a bigger impact or we deeply enjoy. 
So the task here is to draw out a rough sketch of your circle of influence and how your work impacts the company. Okay, so this is kind of an example. Um, this is normally used for like therapy exercises, but I think it's very, um, it's a great example for what we're doing here. So yeah, there's a circle of control, which is like things that you can, um, you have direct control over. The circle of influence, which is like things that you would pair with someone else on to accomplish. And there's the circle of concern, which is like everything around you that's like, this is concerning to me, but I don't have much control over it. Um, so some examples of these levels are um, circle of control. We'll start there is like, I can control the quality of my work and how I interact with others. Um, circle of influence example is like, I can control um, how supportive I am of my team. And circle of concern related to like software, um, for example, is like product stability, right? So like, I think that kind of falls between the, those two levels, um, but sometimes like stability is kind of out of your scope, right? Um, some examples of internal opportunities, um, taking on a difficult project, asking for the career ladder, um, and a detailed assessment of where you land on it, right? I think it's, um, it's good to know where you stand and like what you're achieving for. And if you don't have a career ladder, you should ask that it gets created. Um, other opportunities are like committing to be an, being an expert in one area of the business. Um, this is always very helpful finding a partner in crime who wants to brainstorm ideas of like other internal opportunities with you. Um, and then my favorite is to offer to pair with another department on an, on an initiative. Um, because I think that we can get like really comfortable in our teams, right? But like normally when you're working with another department, um, your impact is much larger and everyone wins at that point. All right, so the finish line for these are two, um, two things, either increase your circle of influence internally or work closely with your manager on accomplishing career ladder items so that you can level up at your company. Okay, external solutions which is all about applying. So before we dive into this, I'm curious, like what stops you from applying? Qualifications, my portfolio. Those are two very, very common ones. Yes, be around the inter yep, interview process. Yep. Yep. These are awesome. Okay. So um, some pre-hype before we even dive into applying. Um, what's the worst that could happen is my first, my first comment. Um, they tell you no, and then you continue on, right? You continue applying. Um, so some inspiration around rejection. Um, it is, takes a lot of effort to apply, right? But there's like also some like things that are completely out of your control around rejection. Um, it almost always has to do with timing, right? Like maybe um, they didn't open up their pipeline at the time when they were actually looking for someone or like those, those dates were off. Um, another inspiration is like the universe has your back. So you're going to get the right role at the right time. And then the other point is they might have um, capacity limits, right? Like maybe they would rather have like two seats versus one senior. So like budgeting has a lot to do with that. And then just like Interviewing is notoriously awful. So that's, that's just the baseline for Devin. Cool. Um, if you think a role is interesting and you believe you could crush it, you should apply. If you think you're qualified for at least half of the responsibilities listed, you should apply. And women, I'm speaking to you. Uh, I think the data point around this is that um, women, women will apply for jobs they're 60% qualified for, while men will um, apply to 100%, or yes, uh, reverse that. So uh, males will apply for roles that they're 60% qualified for, and the women um, will only apply if they're 100% qualified for. Um, and then another point about applying is that you should really never interview or apply for a job where you think you're going to be the best, right? So like this talk is all about leveling up. And um, if you're leveling up and you're basically setting yourself up to be the best in your new company, like how do you how do you continue growing in that role? And then titles. Um, titles are terrible, but there's like mixed feelings around titles, right? So like 
Uh, my advice is like, don't let the title define you. They can be like all over the place, but do know that titles are used for leverage, um, mostly around marginalized groups. So titles um, do matter. All right, so now we're going to channel our inner Taylor Swift and be uh, fearless. So this is where our network tracker comes into play. We're gonna start looking at that list, um, working with those jobs around those companies that we already have relationships with. And why do we do this? Um, because we already got a leg up, right? Like the chances of you getting your resume in these like automated systems, like getting it actually looked at are much higher when you access your immediate network. And we're just gonna apply. Another tool is around tracking applications is this um, job application spreadsheet. Uh, and I think that you can either like rage apply, which I don't really encourage, um, but just keeping track of like the status of your applications is really important. Um, mostly because sometimes like uh, maybe a follow up email is actually gonna get you that other interview. Um, so just keeping track on here is very helpful. Interviews. I mean, like this is exactly what an interview is like, right? Two people just like sitting across, like talking to each other, like not really knowing what they're getting themselves into. Like, so like, how do we approach interviews? Uh, another note here is your hiring manager and interviewer are likely just as anxious as you are. Um, so some tips, you are totally in the driver's seat here, right? Like, even though you think that you're looking to get hired, like you have complete power in this, in this scenario too. You're also, cause you're interviewing the company and your manager. So like totally feel free to ask uncomfortable questions um, and sell how you bring value in these um, interviews. And then like when you're interviewing, I think it's really important to um, assess like, is this a person that I'd feel comfortable receiving feedback from? Um, and would you be comfortable having difficult conversations with this person and or team? Right, so uh, kind of summary around these, the major to-dos are um, one, so circle your verbs and write those narratives. Uh, the second one is showcase your talent. And the third one is write that dream statement and get that job. We did it. Um, and I think like after you go through all this stuff, it's like leveling up and like being a senior or being a mid, like it's kind of like being an adult, right? Like they're like, oh, when you're an adult, you'll understand. And then you get to like being an adult and you're like, am I an adult? Um, so regardless of where you are, I think it's really common to wonder, like, am I a senior? And so I think you can get very different definitions of what a senior engineer is, but this is mine. Um, a senior engineer is um, very heavily focused on like the local developer experience, the quality of the product, they're experienced in failing, helpful to their teammates, and can explain their reasoning in depth. And in true pandemic fashion, I've got a QR code for you to um, access the Google Drive that has all of the documents that we went over today. And I'd love to hear feedback on this talk.